Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the wonderful TV show Breeders. We are joined today by executive producer, co-creator, and actor Martin Freeman, as well as actor Daisy Haggard. And Martin, I wanted to start by asking a little bit about um, the, the creative process behind the scenes, because as a producer and as, as a co-creator, I've heard you say that you've kind of learned along the journey of making this show where you feel like it's helpful and useful for you to be mm. part of a lot of the creative conversations, yes. but also recognizing that maybe you don't need to be in the room when they're talking about what type of curtains hanging by a window, yeah. what glass is going to yeah. be on a table. And yeah, I was really yeah. interested in, in that part of the process and really learning those moments where it's helpful to be at the table, to be there to talk yes. about casting, tone, episode yes. arcs, and where it's actually more helpful to step back and focus solely on your work as an actor in the show. Well, I'm fascinated, I mean, given that, you know, I'm an actor, and so I'm fascinated uh, by the acting um, department and who we're going to have in the show. So, I mean, yeah, I guess this was the first job that I had done where I was looking at acting tapes and aud audition tapes and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I very much want to be part of that. Uh, tonally, I want, always want to be part of that, really. I mean, I think my most of my notes, probably, most of my script notes or, or and sort of various uh, edit notes um, are about tone probably uh, and there are probably some messy incoherent <laughs> scribblings about what I think it should be like this um, and yeah I, I don't need to know about the curtains necessarily although, although um, sometimes I wish I did actually <laughs> I mean, there's, a, there's a great um, Larry Sanders uh, show where you know Larry says to you know, his producer, I, I want to be across everything. I want to be across everything. Let me know. And within, you know, plug me in. And then by the end of the week, he's saying, unplug me, because I, I don't need to know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, so that's very true. I think, um, I think you have to sort of watch your own ego uh, as far as, it's just not helpful for you to be involved in every single part of it. And I don't want to, I couldn't, and I don't want to micromanage anybody. And, but I do want to stick my oar in when it's, when it's applicable, you know. And I definitely... I'm quite opinionated about a certain group of things, but in other ways, I'm like, I don't, yeah, I don't know what kind of rucksack Luke should have, and I, you know, I don't massively care, you know. No, I love it. And, and Daisy, talking about your character a little bit, you know, one of one of the things about Ali is that I feel like she kind of rolls with things a little bit more than Paul to an extent. And, and there's really a lot of an undercurrent in terms of of the stress and tension with her as a character, where with Paul, it's, it's a lot more on the surface. And I was interested in, in how you kind of create that undercurrent where it's always still there residually. And then how you kind of pinpoint and find the moments where it is really going to come to the surface and everything does bubble up a lot for her. Well, I feel like in this season, things do start to bubble up. And um, and I think the people are different, aren't they? Some people wear their rage or their anger and they're freer than others. And other people sort of, you know, kind of maintain it. And some people don't get as angry. And everyone's kind of different, aren't they? And I think that Ali is actually quite a bit more easygoing in a way. But then she has her moments where she goes, no, like, I'm done on that, you know. And in this season, I think we just, we just see her so stretched, so overstretched and so understrained that actually she's, she's, much, she's sort of much more the, in a way, like I feel you know it's a loud emotional angry kind of um parent in this in this season mm -hmm. and so it's sort of it's sort of and also when things are really well written it's, it's a sort of implicit as to where when and where you're you know when to to do to to let moments out and in you know what I mean and, and sometimes you play something too big and someone says oh actually you know what that might be better if you you know so um so yeah I feel like this season we see her much more like you know just her, her sort of grittier sort of angrier uglier side because she sort of she can't contain it anymore you know not, not that she's been containing this like you know she's got new problems that just mean that she can't she can't just sort of be as easy going yeah we were always very uh we were always very keen that um that we shouldn't we wouldn't have a show i mean years ago when we were talking yeah. about it that we wouldn't have a show where paul is basically the child and his yeah. wife is going to be the mum who comes and cleans up and sort of, you know, with an apron on going, why are you little, you know, like if, if we didn't want the, the wife and mother to be the grown up and the, the husband and father to be the doofus sort of thing. Um, we wanted both of them. And yeah, pound for pound, she is slightly easier going than Paul. Ali is a little bit easier going than Paul, certainly as far as the kids are concerned. But we still wanted her to be able to to go nuts as well, <laughs> you know, nice. and for her, to, to, for her not to have her shit together and not just be the grown up. Cause we've, we've see that quite a lot. <laughs> we do see quite, I think where the woman just yeah. comes in and cleans up all the mess. It's like, Oh, oh you silly, angry man. Exactly. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. 
it's not like that. Too sometimes, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. but no, it's never been like that, which is which is what's you know, which is what I really like about it. You know, mm. they're, they're they're equals. Um, they're different yeah. people. They respond emotionally differently in different situations. And uh, mm. and then this season, she just happens to be really sort of strange. She's under the caution this season. That's true. Yeah. yeah, I felt for you sometimes. Yeah, it was like... Because <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that balance that you're both talking about really, really comes across in watching the show as well. And even just, you know, as well as the way that they're parenting and the dynamic of their relationship, it's kind of, there's an emotional balance that's unspoken as well. You know, when when she's mm. having moments where, where things are a little bit more untethered, you know, Paul kind of has to come in and, and keep it yeah. together a little bit more and it ebbs and flows between them. Yeah. And so, you know, when you're going into scenes together, are you also kind of calibrating part of the emotional trajectory of a scene based on what the other person's doing and where their character is as well? I think me and Daisy are both quite good at um, responding to each other because yeah. I think, it's, you know, uh, I mean, it's easier for talk. To, I can talk more easily about Daisy's strengths than mine. But one of Daisy's strengths is that she listens. You know that she, she's open. And I think the best acting is, you know, it's a cliche, but it is reacting. You know, and I think we're both probably quite comfortable reactors. Yeah, uh, we know we know what we know what we're doing. We know what show we're in. Do you know what I mean? And so we. I don't think we would ever. We would very rarely talk about Daisy and I would very rarely talk about a scene before doing it. It's, it's usually just, you know, we read it through with the director and then we will rehearse it. And, in, and it's doing that normally that we, that we find what we're doing. We hardly ever talk about it before. No, it's, 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 it's at the moment that we do it. Then we might have a discussion when we're doing a scene where we're like feeling out how, what exactly, how, you know, how, how this should work. But mostly it's quite, we're both quite, I think, probably quite instinctive as well, aren't we? And then mm. they listen to each other. That is the main thing. I can, I can never talk very intelligently about acting because I am just like, read it, do it. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. And I, then I, I, know I, yeah. Yeah, I, I sometimes feel terribly disappointed, but it's disappointing when I'm being interviewed because I'm like, well, I no, just do it. It's, it's, a completely, it's a completely valid question, you know, when you're asked yeah. as an actor, uh, as, as we are a lot, and it's, and it's a valid question, how do, you get your, how do you get yourself to that point? And very often the answer is by reading the script, <laughs> you know, by reading the script and, and attending to whatever that scene and then listening to the other actor and doing and, and sort of just letting it happen and being open I think yeah. open and relaxed and doing it but yeah, yeah I feel like we, we could talk about moments in the scene you know once we'd read it through but we didn't discuss it mm. we never sort of preemptively discussed things no we? I, just, I think we, yeah I think we probably have some I think Daisy and I have some similarities I think in our approach and it probably one of them would be to keep it fun and one yeah. way that I probably think to kill the fun is just to sort of do an essay about it beforehand. So I don't, I don't yeah, care, you know, do I, I, want it. It. I want to play it, I want to play it. And also the less you talk, honestly, unless, of course, some things need more talking than others, right? And some things genuinely do need more preparation than others. But the less you talk about it, the more takes you get to do. Do you know what I mean? Like if you just go into it, it's like, oh good, we've got three hours to do this. Let's do it as many times as possible. And then we will find as many choices and as many, you will find the parameters of where the scene is, as opposed to, talking about it for 45 minutes because subconsciously we don't really want to try anything out. <laughs> we, we just want to kind of keep safe and talk about it. Whereas both, I think me and Daisy are quite comfortable with just, okay, let's try it. And, it, and, if, and if it's not good, no one dies. It's fine. Then we can, have a, then we can chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting about that is that in its in of itself is, is kind of like an approach and a process. And, and I've yeah, also heard you, Daisy, say that one of the one of the components of working very instinctively is about being very open to notes as well and really kind of like listening to that feedback between takes. Is that something, you know, it, it can be a little bit of a journey to become comfortable with that and make sure that it doesn't feel like a criticism and it is about mm. just evolving and trying things differently. Oh, good Have notes. You- amazing like a good note yeah. so some notes if it's an, a bad note it's just it can really screw you up right but a good note is just it unlocks something and it's brilliant like you know i think all actors really like a good note don't they well most. <laughs> i don't i don't like <laughs> apart from martin the rest I'm of living. Them. <laughs> i'm living as soon as anyone says anything to me apart from notes like be funnier or like you know <laughs> or something like that but they kill everyone <laughs> yeah and sometimes I think it's, it's, it's very often it's just economical notes, you know, like sometimes yeah, totally. a really short note is like, okay, yeah, I know what you mean. And sometimes I think the temptation can be to over explain oneself with a note and actually you, you've only heard the first minute and the next three minutes are just like, now you're just clouding my brain. So sometimes yeah. someone will just give you eight words and you go, brilliant. Yes, exactly. Hmm. 
you know, and, and obviously one of the things for both of these characters is, is that journey of, of the tension and the stress and the weight of carrying everything, being sleep deprived that all comes with parenthood. And what's interesting is that each season kind of feels like it's got a very unique trajectory in terms of what that looks like. And obviously the second season in aging the kids up, that created a very different dynamic. And then this season, we're obviously looking at, you know, what's the fallout from everything that happened between Paul and Luke at the end of, of season two, um, you know, and kind of going off what you were just saying, is it quite natural to kind of find what is that specific tension? What is that specific stress in, and what's that tonality of the season? Or does that really come from just stepping into the scenes with each other and, and responding to the writing? Yeah, I think, I think it comes from just the, the preparation uh, with the writing it, before, before the shooting starts. Um, and then, yes, as we've said, we are, you know, you're led by what the, what the scene requires and what, what, you know, what the script requires. Um, Beyond that, is you just sort of got to turn up and be open. I think and be be prepared and be professional and just sort of be open. But I think we all, um, yeah, we all just want to see scripts where they, where it's exciting. You know, we all want to see be excited by whatever uh, scene we're in next, whether it's a funny one or a tragic one or a desperate one. You know, that's it. You know, Daisy had more. She had more unfunny ones this year, didn't you? I think I didn't get one. many laughs, did I? <laughs> Less, to be honest, less than normal. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. you know, again, it's easy for me to say Daisy is a, a highly accomplished actor all around. She knows where comedy is, and she knows where drama is, and she's brilliant, absolutely brilliant at balancing those two things. But yes, it's true, pound for pound, that's, we yeah. laugh less. <laughs> we did laugh less, but that's so, that's because the story required that, and that's in a really course, interesting way. So course, it's, yeah. you know, it was great. It was really great. Yeah. I also love the description when you, when you first kind of came out with the show and were filming the first season of the alternate scripts, because obviously legally mm. you literally can't say these things to children mm. um, and have it be on yeah. camera. And so there's alternate scripts with different words, but you still have to kind of get that tonality and that intention of the scene across yeah. the dynamic with them. And is that still so, you know, even though the kids are, are a bit older now, I'm assuming that that's still the case that you've got these alternate scripts. That... Not normally actually, no, because, oh, because interesting. During, during series two, the parents, very nicely gave us permission, mm. didn't they, Days? To yeah. sort of say, well, they've heard all these words in the playground at school. Just swear, just you know. Um, and I, but there are some oh. words, some words that you can't swear. Some words that you can't say. Yeah. Um, and I think I found that out actually. I think I think oh. during the series, so I think we were having a run through of a scene, and I said one of the very bad words. And Which one? <laughs> the, the worst sort of word. The worst and, um, <laughs> and, uh, and I was told very quickly, oh, no, 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 not that one. We can't say that. <laughs> I was like, okay, fine. But generally, we, we can say what we like in front of the kids. Yeah, now. which is great because I could never get through a scene saying cock ring. No, clock ring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just yeah. couldn't do it. I, I was incapable of doing something quite so technical. So it was always <laughs> yeah. completely disastrous. It would result in me sort of snorting and giggles and saying, and then saying the bad thing anyway. So I'm very relieved. Yeah. Having said, having given you know all this praise to Daisy for what an amazing actor she is, she's very easily put off like a like Absolutely. an Afghan hound, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a frightened yes, frightened, a frightened squirrel. squirrel, yeah, squirrel or dog. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. I do no actually like an Afghan hound. Go straight into character. Anyway. <laughs> And on a different note and tone, Martin, I did actually want to ask a little bit about filming that scene between Paul and Luke at the end of last season, um, because I was I was rewatching it and it's it's a really kind of emotionally harrowing scene to watch between the two of them. And also, you know, there's a lot of specific elements like the, the way that Paul holds him, holds him, but makes sure that he's never kind of physically trying to even move him ever so slightly. It's just mm. literally holding him tight to his chest, like, don't leave me, don't run away right now. Mm. And then the moment where you're sitting on the bench afterwards and it's just that contemplation of, you know, how did we get to this point where this is how my son is responding to me yes. and kind of everything that's been leading up to that moment. And yes. I was just interested in, in hearing a little bit about the approach in that scene, working on it and really finding mm. those different moments for him as a character within it. It, it took a bit of tickling that, it took, you know, it took a little bit because uh, Alex who plays Luke um, was a year less experienced than he is now. And he'd done a year less acting than he's done now. And he's, he's really good, obviously, and he's up for the challenge, but some of that stuff is not easy to do. You know, like as me and Daisy were saying, some acting as an adult, you find out 
on an almost daily basis that you're not as good at this as you thought you were because there's always going to be something in the course of a day where you go oh shit no I, I can't really do that very well so as a kid he was a kid then um bringing stuff up on camera convincingly 17 times in a row really hard it's really really hard um and so him losing his fucking shit with his dad and really letting it come from his belly that took a bit of tickling we got there but also then you've got the technical thing of you've got to look like you're punching martin but don't punch martin <laughs> don't actually punch Martin. so we had a fight director in there and everything and, and ollie the director of those uh episodes works you know really really well with the young uns uh about how to tickle that stuff out of them if there's a if there if there's technical difficulty with it um but again it's you know it's obeying the writing really it's it's obeying the writing and trying not to get in the way of it and trying to honor it and not not mess it up but it, that's the interesting thing i think about working with younger people because by definition they are less experienced you know they, they, they haven't been doing it for 25 years like i have you know so um and again that doesn't mean i'm any better but I, at least i have at least done that before do you know what i mean and when you haven't done it before, it's hard. I think it's hard. It and especially, sorry, go on, Liz. No, just saying, so it's a really big sort of, yeah, like a multifaceted task, isn't it? It's like... it, is, yeah. it really is, yeah. I mean, like, you know, sh really properly let go and shout at this fucking person in the face and then punch him, but don't punch him and let your breath be how it is when you're all flustered. It's, um, yeah, he did, a, he did a great job, but it's, you know, but it's not easy, that stuff. Yeah, he, he did. And then obviously, you know, for you, Daisy, that puts Ali in, in a very kind of strange position at the beginning of the season, particularly with her husband not even physically being in the house and kind of having to play this mediator and also kind of having to be a single parent to a degree because he can't set foot in the house with them. Um, you know, and, and you were saying before that obviously there's there's a bit less comedy for Ali because of all the things that she's carrying. Um, and what were kind of the different spaces that you felt like that really gave you the chance to to explore within her as a character because of this unique space that she's holding where she's kind of a mediator her husband's still around but can't be there as a parent and so everything's landing on her even more so well I think also also she's you know she has an early the early early menopause so she's and runs runs out of her of her HRT so she's kind of like um she she kind of you know, you know, as I said, you know, she sort of bubbles over a bit. It's like you see more of her, like her ability to scratch her kind of, you know, she just uh, somebody who's who's just under so much strain that they can't. That um, so it's quite it's quite nice to to to, to show that side to her because she's sort of been slightly different before. So it's quite nice to her to let her just kind of go, you know, let her be, just be like, fuck everyone. <laughs> you know, it was nice to see her sort of erupt a bit. Um, and really fun to do as well because I like doing that because <laughs> I don't do it enough in real life. <laughs> <laughs> and for both of you as well, one of the, one of the aspects that I love that's so naturalistic about their dynamic is there's there's times where each of them are saying things out loud to each other. They're having conversations, and it's the first time that they've said these things. They're new conversations, and then within their dynamic, you know, whenever you spend that extent of time with someone and you've been together for years, there's always things where you know you've kind of you've said this thing out loud for the fifth time. You've actually told that story before, and the person's heard it. And you find those moments where the dialogue just keeps flowing. They keep talking over, or they kind of don't respond to something because there's just that level of familiarity. Does that come yeah. quite naturally to you when you look? at the scripts in terms of like what's the new pieces within this conversation to them and what are the pieces that's just old hack and they just already know it does feel like it comes quite naturally yeah. it, does feel really like it. it feels i think between daisy myself and chris and simon i think we're all so on the same page now because we've done it you know we've done it before we know what the relationship between ali and paul is we were very, always very clear that they love each other they have a three-dimensional relationship i think they still well, I mean, it's it's put under pressure the more, the more we see of them, but they still find each other attractive. They're still a couple. Um, they don't, you know, they they of course where we join them is not ideal, but they are they know and like each other, and I think they have yeah. a similar sense of humour, and they do make each other laugh even in um, even in straightened circumstances. And we see that, you know, there, there's just little asides with each other where they just kind of look at each other and go, oh, "Shut up, you fucking." Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, like they, they're little in jokes. They, you know, they know them. It does, it does feel very familiar. And I guess because it's, yeah, because it's series three. 
And even going into season three and, and having spent so much time playing these characters, is it still kind of helpful to have these flashback moments? You know, I love that they're still such a part of the show that we get to see these moments of, of kind of contextualizing different instances, like, you know, seeing Paul singing to Luke in the bathroom when he was a kid. And then what's the current context to now of what that day was at the same time that they thought their daughter was missing? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, does that kind of help you just in, in terms of knowing these characters even more with always having those flashback moments and, and adding? backstory elements as well yeah I think it does and I also think that it um it it's really nice to see it's just it serves really well to see how relationships evolve and how people change and how you know moments and relationships change you know change not just evolve but also just really really can change so I I I think that's a really lovely um part of the show because Mm. you can it's just a clever and sort of um quite an emotionally clever way of showing of showing where someone is now and where and where but where they were or what's missing or what's changed or what's you know what's not working or what is working you know I think it's I, I really I, I really like that about the show yes I also think that audience wise a lot of people really appreciate that this is a show that has a lot of respect for its audience in terms of of the comedy you know the writing the characters as well and in regards to you know, we do get those moments where they actually laugh out loud in response to things that that they say. And, you know, yeah. you kind of acknowledge the comedy within the characters, which yeah. so frequently never happens. I agree um, with you. Again, yeah. it, you know, was that kind of just a very natural thing that, that unfurled when you first started shooting it? Or was it something that you ever talked about, including in the show? I'm not sure we talked about it. I don't think we explicitly talked about it. I think I, I totally agree with you that um, there's not enough... Uh, characters laughing at each other in, you know what I mean? Like in something that purports to be naturalistic, right? Well, in real life, people laugh, you know, in real life, people do think each other are funny. I think what happened was, I guess, early 2000s, a type of comedy happened that was, you know, whatever you want to call cringy or whatever, and where people would just look in horror at what someone else making a fool of themselves or whatever. Um, and actually, that's fine, but also people don't people don't generally just stand there not doing or saying anything for three minutes. You know, they have some sort of overt reaction. Um, so, and as I said, Paul and Paul and Ali do find each other funny, and and, and the, the the kids I, they find the kids funny, and you know, and that's the other wonderful thing about the, the kids getting older who are playing them is, um, you know, Eve and Alex are very capable of bringing the comedy as well as the the drama to it. So they they all find each other quite funny, even though they are in this fractured state when we find them. And and with the conflict as well, it it comes at a lot of different layers. You know, there's moments where the conflict, the the stakes are quite high. You know, it's my husband can't come home right now. You know, I can't get my estrogen and my entire body is is kind of on fire at the moment and everything that comes with that. And then there's moments where it's you haven't unloaded the dishwasher and I've asked you to do it five times. Um, You know, is there a difference in, in the dynamics that you find in scenes when the stakes are really, really high for them versus those moments where it's those kind of small niggly things? Things, but it's actually really about something else. It's not about the dishwasher not being unloaded. It's about everything that comes before that. It's, that's just so family life, isn't it? <laughs> so I think that's so what family life to me. That's so what family life is. It's like in the same sentence, you can you could you could actually kill someone about like a, a the dishwasher, but then something bigger could have happened. You know, it's so it just that just felt feels so natural and and sort of real to me. And it's peppering those moments in that make it that you know, that I know I. They bring me great joy because I, I, they're so familiar. <laughs> and the show as well, you know, I've, I've heard mention of, of the show being filmed with family friendly hours. So what does that look like and, and how does that make a huge difference? Because I know that, you know, obviously for both of you having families and even the whole writing team are all parents as well. Was that something that was really important to everyone at the offset that that be part of the dynamic of how you how you came on board and made this show? It doesn't feel massively family friendly to me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> any, any working days... And, yeah, still long <laughs> yeah to me, I don't know how you felt about it Daisy I mean because you, your children are at a different stage of development yeah. than mine but no it, it didn't it doesn't feel it doesn't listen I, I don't think this is the business you want to be in if you want to have a social and family life still to be absolutely honest but some people have it worse definitely but um, no you're still out, not- of the, out of the house for the vast majority of the day yeah yeah but I think I suppose I suppose I suppose um 
well, I'll say, you know, that there's there's a protection of, on weekends as much as possible on this job, whereas on some jobs yeah. there is none. Um, mm -hmm. So I suppose that's a thing. But yeah, no, I think mostly when you when you've got a, a sort of leading part in a in a television series, you're you go right. <laughs> I will probably be up at six and probably be home at eight most days. Yeah. <laughs> If I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. But the weekends are a good thing. That is but good. the weekends being protected is, is very valuable because loads of jobs don't actually protect that. So that that is, you know, something that we're very grateful for. Yes, yes, yes. It's different to America, you know. Because I, I remember on The Hobbit when explaining to an American actor that it's very, very usual for us to work Saturdays or 11 day fortnights. We do, you know, five days and then six days. And, and he was horrified because <laughs> he was like, oh, no, we don't really do that. Um, and I'm sure sometimes it does happen, but I think it's more common in the UK that there's no respect for your weekends or <laughs> some or certainly on public holidays or anything like that. The way oh yeah, bank like holidays don't mean holidays. anything, do they? Only jack shit. Yeah. Uh, whereas in America, there there is actually quite a lot of fencing off of certain days, you know. But then you know, but then in America they work 53 hours a day instead. That's that's the trade. The other thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And with the comedy as well, I also love those moments where it kind of comes from unexpected, you know, it comes from unexpected places or their emotional response to something is different than what you would think on the surface. Like there's a great moment in this season, Daisy, where, you know, your character kind of starts welling up and getting really emotional and crying because she's been complimented, you know, and that's that's slightly out of left field mm -hmm. as a response, but also feels very natural and, and has happened to all of us as well. What have been some of your favorite moments where you've been able to kind of play against what the emotion feels like it would be like that? I, I was going to say that yeah that one but also that yeah that, there's one where where with the there's a where I do speak a lot about having the menopause and I want to be listened to and then we make a little we have a nice little joke at the end mm -hmm. about it I like those moments that you undercut something straight away because that just feels real to me yes yeah the familiarity that they have as a couple they've been together many years now and uh they know what makes each other laugh and they know what you know they know what they want to say, but they're not saying it. You know what I mean? Like, so if you say something and I thought of a little pun, but you're, you're talking about something quite serious, I can't say the pun. I can't say the pun. But then I've got to admit that I really wanted to say that stupid pun. Um, but I didn't want to interrupt you to do it. I, I, I like that. Yeah, it's what we talked about before is the familiarity of, of Paul and Ali. It rings true, you know. It doesn't, and it's not the saviour of everything. It doesn't mean that they're, they're not, their relationship isn't in trouble because their relationship is in trouble. But, um, but that doesn't mean they're not really familiar or still make each other laugh. Yeah. And, and with that, that familiarity that you have both with working with each other, kind of the dynamic of, of how you work on scenes that you were talking about earlier and even just your characters, what are the aspects that even with all that familiarity still kind of keep you on your toes and, and challenge you the most still about working on this show? I think she's, uh, I, 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 like I said earlier, I, I, th I, I am amazed. I, I'm quite grown up now. I've been doing this a long time and I'm amazed by how often, and I'm not being modest, I'm amazed at how often I think, fuck, I'm not very good at this. You know, like I, I, I thought there's a moment and I was going to get it and I'm not, yeah, I'm just not getting it. So that happens pretty, genuinely pretty regularly. Not in, because my personality isn't enough. To, I won't go to pieces and then want to kill myself about it, but I'll, I'll, I'll ride over it, but it's pretty usual for me to go, why aren't I, why aren't I getting this right? So yeah, it's, um, yeah, we both have that. And also, you know, the sheer quantity of, of what we have to do in a day and, and, you know, just, you know, sometimes you, you know, you get to a day and you're like, oh my God, there's like, you know, it's nine pages of like big speeches. And I yeah, didn't yeah, sleep yeah. last night because my daughter slept on my face. And have mm. I, am I on that, those lines? I don't want to let Martin down because he's so, he's always so annoyingly on it and brilliant. True, <laughs> so, true. You, you know, you can be doing this for as long as ever, but you, you're, you're still, you still go, oh, you know, I have loads of those moments where I'm like, oh God, I just, I, I keep forgetting that line. Or, you know, suddenly you're just stumped by something tiny and you're like, why, you know, so it's just, you know, we're, no, we're, not, we're not robots. We're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and the time, you know, you get tired and you get, you know, you have moments where you have days where you're like, oh, damn, I don't think I was very good. I hope they can pull that together. And other days where you're like, I feel quite good. <laughs> so Absolutely, it's just, yeah. Absolutely. It's the way it is, I think. Yeah. Well, in, in watching the show, you know, since season one, the performances have been utterly brilliant and this season's no exception. And thank you so much for talking about it. Really, really appreciate both of your you. times today. Thank Thanks, you so Mara. much. Nice to see you. Thank you very much.